Okay, this is a video on App Inventor key skills. Uh, we're going to start with this. So, how to alter the direction the sprite is going in order to reflect bouncing. So, I'm going to have a look at using this example project. Uh, at the moment, it's got a few things in it. It's got a circle sprite that I'm going to use in a second, uh, a little character, a penguin, and a block, and a restart button. The only code that's in there currently is this bit of code that when the restart button is clicked it initializes the penguin sprites position to the top left hand corner of the screen so zero zero uh, sets the speed to a non-negative number so it's going to start move uh, sorry a non-zero number so it's going to start moving and the heading is set to 290 which is a southern direction if you imagine the range of the heading property to be a kind of 360 degree circle with zero being right or east uh, all the way around to uh, 180 on the west and 270 is the south so that's what I'm going to make it to start off with. So when I have a look at testing this app, uh, as soon as I click restart what happens is the sprite goes to the top and falls down. So this is because the speed is 10 and the heading is 270. Okay, so we have a look at making it so that when it hits the block, what's going to happen is it's uh, going to kind of start heading back up to the top in a sort of bouncing action. So the way this works, I'm going to use a touch. Oh, sorry, no, I'm not. The way this works, I'm going to look for the collided with event. And a lot of these events, they come with variables. This one is this variable of other. So as soon as the collided with event is triggered, uh, the object that it collides with is stored in this variable called other. So I'm going to have a look now at using an if statement. Oops. So I can check if the thing that we're colliding with is equal to the object. So here I'm going to look inside the block sprite and right at the bottom you have the reference uh, not the, the object has to itself, okay? So block one is the reference to my platform. I'm going to check if the thing that we're hitting, which is other, is the block. And if it is, I'm going to make some alterations to the heading property of uh, the penguin. So I need to say set penguin dot heading. So I'm using the kind of prompts to write the code, but obviously all of these blocks are in the corresponding palette for whatever sprite you're trying to. Uh, code or make an action for. Um, okay, so I'm going to set the heading to, and the way to start off, I'm going to make it bounce straight back up. So, as I said, uh, it was looking in a clockwise motion from east, south, west to north. That's 0, 270, 180 to 90. So, I'm trying to turn 270, which is south, into north to make it bounce straight back up to the top. So, I need to get it to change into 90. So I need to invert the direction, and the way that I'm going to do this is with a little bit of maths. If I take the current direction away from 360, um, penguin.heading, then what it should do is when it collides with block one, it should start traveling back up to the top. So now let's just have a go at testing this. So rather than it floating down to the bottom, it's going to hit the target, or hit the block rather and go straight back up to the top okay so just to show you how this works I can change the heading now to something more like 290 so it's not a perfect southern angle it's gonna go slightly to a sort of southeastern angle and it has the same effect and um, we're kind of bouncing off at a right angle okay you notice that it doesn't stop when it hits the top um, and this is because it will just carry on going until it hits an edge and can't move anymore uh, okay, so I'm going to just set that back to 270. Now we're going to mark at this one. Move a sprite for a set amount of time. So the way we're going to do this is I'm going to use the circle sprite. I'm going to write some code so that uh, it, when I click on the screen, it's going to move and it's going to try and sort of catch the penguin sprite. Okay, so with my circle sprite, I'm going to use uh, when green circle dot touchdown. And as soon as that happens, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set uh, the green circle. I'm going to look for the X position, which is where it is on a horizontal axis. And I'm going to set it to the left-hand side. So just like we did up here, the left-hand side of the screen is represented by zero. 
So imagine it as a, a grid of coordinates and the top left most corner of the screen is zero, zero and the bottom right hand corner is something like 400, 300 depending on the dimensions of the device. All right, so that's gonna go to the left hand side and then I'm gonna to need to use this timer. So what I want to do is when I dragged my clock component on, I've set it so the interval is 3000 milliseconds, so three seconds. So it's like an alarm and the alarm is gonna go off every three seconds as long as the timer is on, okay? So what I'm gonna do is as soon as we've moved, I'm gonna set it so my timer is on. So set uh, circle clock timer enabled to true and what that does then is it initializes it so that this event when time when clock dot timer rings every three seconds so when that happens what I want to do is reset the exposition back to the middle of the screen and then also I want to turn the timer off to stop it from ringing okay so hopefully this should achieve what we're looking at, which is this is idea of moving a sprite for a set amount of time. So if I look at testing it, and I'm going to restart, and it bounces, but now when I click my circle, it moves to the left-hand side of the screen for three seconds before moving back. 